Okay, yeah. we're live. This is good. Yes. That's okay. And I like to do these things kind of like um, natural. This is, this is the way life is these days with this yep. stuff. You don't really know what's going on. It's, uh, the days are gone of the carousel and the slides that go through there. Remember that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, we want authenticity in the world. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not sure if this thing records side by side or if this, uh, the way it's set up right now, it does uh, voice activation. But um, we'll get going on it anyways, at any rate. So it's recording now, sure. correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder if when we're done with this, does that recording go on to my cloud or is it going on to your cloud? Well, I guess or we'll find out, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> worst case, I have to get it to you because I hit the record button. But yeah, it could go to mine, I guess. Exactly. Now I hear a little funny. thing. Is that your phone going off? You got it, yeah. Because you are so popular. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote down some topics and I sent them over to you that I want to talk about because I do want yep. to keep this uh, focused on the event industry and the using Facebook for events because that you know, with, with Facebook ads, I think that's a very, it's a very powerful platform. Oh, and by the way, let me just start over a little bit here and introduce Janet Johnson. She's basically the Mari Smith of Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Janet is our Facebook expert here locally in the Twin Cities and she runs a social media meetup and teaches people specifically about Facebook advertising and, and how you can use that. And I'm amazed with Facebook, even though some people have concerns about that privacy law and everything, from a marketer's point of view, I think it's really cool that you can really narrow down and find your target demographic. So that's what we're gonna be talking a little bit about today. And Janet's gonna share how some of that stuff works. I don't expect her to be doing any big workshop and teaching you exactly how this all works because that could take a long time because it's a very complicated engine, that Facebook thing. So, That's what my ads ROI Academy is for. <laughs> there you exactly. go. <laughs> Stuff like that. If you want to go to college and learn about the exactly. details, <laughs> you, you also do this for people, right? If, if uh, say, for example, a caterer said, we want to get more catering business for company picnics, you'd be able to help them do that. I manage a lot right now. Yes. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's, a, it's a complicated thing. I've, I do some of it and I try and keep it very simple. So basically there's, um, there's the capability of boosting a post versus doing an ad for a post or an event. And the difference, the way I understand it, is when you do the ad, you can get a little more drilled down and specific of where you want that to show up versus boosting it. It's just boosting it and it just kind of goes out. To Boost is, is the engagement goal. So basically, you, it, it's the goal they set for it, whereas if you're inside ads manager is where you would have to set up your ad, where I tell people I want you to get comfortable with ads manager because like you said, you have more power over placement, you have more power over what exactly, uh, so targeting options, uh, details, texting, there's just so much more you can do inside ads manager. The boost is pretty big. Boost is fine for brand work. That's kind of what I say. It's just brand awareness. You're just trying to, you know, get a video out there a little further, that kind of thing. Sure. Go ahead and hit the So, so either way, one of those would work if you got your audience set up correctly. And um, to do that, you go in there and you develop. There's, there's like three different types of audiences from what I understand. You've got your, your saved audience where you put a bunch of demographics and yeah. specifics in there and get that. Then you've got your custom audience that is sort of developed from that audience where you've got a customized audience that you love, no love and trust. <laughs> then you got your lookalike audience where you can upload a file and it'll create an audience that's similar to or looks like an audience that you're already currently working yeah, with. Yeah, like an email list or a website traffic or your fans of your page. Those are the lookalikes. And like if the, there was again a like a say an entertainer like me as a magician or a, an MC or a DJ or something, if they've got a database of Twin Cities event planner type people, they'd be able to upload that. Exactly. And then Facebook algorithms would go in and go find other people that are kind of similar to that meeting planner from Cargill or Target or 3M. Yep. So that's the lookalike. Yep. But the first step is those custom audiences. So the custom that you brought up, but we didn't delve into a little, let me go a little further into it, is that would be your email list. They can match phone numbers. They can match, there's certain criteria that they can actually 
match up, whatever matches, then boom, they, that gets put into that custom audience. And I, we email list is kind of the most popular, obviously, but there's lots of different types of lists as long as it's an Excel CSV file. And then there is the video viewer audience. So that's another one that if somebody watched your video, you can create audiences of people who watch that video. Three second, 10 second, 25, 50%. So those are those, there's multiple layers that you could do that. So video retargeting is really big. So creating that audience too. And then there's the Facebook engagement, Instagram engagement. And then lastly, but probably even top of the list is your website traffic. Okay. And that was one you mentioned the pixel the, to yeah. me prior to this. Uh, and website traffic only can be tracked if you put a pixel a code on your website. This pixel code is very, they tell you exactly what to do inside Ads Manager. All you do is grab this weird looking code that you don't need to know what it means. And you need to put that into your website. Either you do it on the back end or a web developer does. The day you put that on is the day they start tracking. So right. I always tell people, whenever they hear about this pixel thing, I say, if you're gonna take any action today, make sure that you get your pixel on. That's the first thing you need to do. I have a pixel question. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what I understood. And it actually is fairly simple. When you see all that gobbledygook, you get kind yeah. of scared going, what if I put this on my website? What will it do? It's okay. You put it in your header, I believe. And if you yeah. don't know how to do that, then your web person can do that. Yeah. But exactly. Here's the pixel question. Is the pixel just tracking the traffic as it uh, goes through the Facebook process and onto a landing page or a website? Or is it actually creating a retargeting, remarketing process? It's grabbing any person that comes from Google. They could come from anywhere. Okay. So just it doesn't have to come from Facebook to your website. Any person that comes to your website, whatever page it's on. So you can track specific pages too. And, and if you're e-commerce, you can track the cart. There's so many details with the pixel, but I'm talking just the basic overall website traffic pixel. Let's just go with one. Um, that basic pixel traffic, they are tracking each, let's just call it each person that goes is put into this audience. Then you have to create the retargeting ad that hits that audience. Oh, I see. So you're not necessarily um, like there used to be the thing with the uh, where it drops a cookie and then wherever you're on the Internet, if you look at something on Amazon, all of a sudden it follows you everywhere. No, you have to do that manually yourself. Got it. You Got would it. have to set up that ad yourself. Yeah. What you're doing is you're getting that pixel to fire. So now you can build an audience around it and then you re re market to the audience. You got it. Yep. So that's, yep. That makes a lot more clarity because it's, it's, it's really a different thing than just having someone land on your thing and get a, get a cookie, right? Yeah, well, in, in, in e-commerce, they're doing that a lot. You know, like, so for instance, the, the people abandon carts, and you can put a tracking pixel specific to the people that abandon the cart, and then, boom, you can have an automated ad that's always running. I mean, you would have to set that up, but you can have it going all the time. And a lot of e-commerce companies do that because it's a big abandoned cart rate. Um, totally. I mean, I've had that situation. I had it with Zoom, with uh, getting into Zoom. I knew, I've known about Zoom for, for years, but I just recently purchased it. So I've abandoned the cart on Zoom many, 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 many times. <laughs> so I get that. Did they retarget you, though, is the question. <laughs> well, well they, they did, but the, that's one of my personal things with this whole digital marketing thing, is it seems like it's so trackable and everything. What they don't take into consideration, there's the human element. Yep. And that happened because I know you. I actually met you through Preston Odenbrett because him and I used to do some webinars. And that's how I found out you're a social media person in Minneapolis. Then I got to know who you are and then uh, went to your sale, your social media thing. And there was the human relationship that got developed. So when you sent me that link, now I feel comfortable. Sure. It has nothing yep. to do with Zoom's marketing, really. Yep. Yep. So it's exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's why I'm in the yep. event business because then people well, meet people face to face. But if, but if you think about it, you you were retargeted to in a different way. Sure. That's kind of the you know. So that's I. If you look at ads, let's look at it. 
that if you are retargeting, you should get creative about it. Don't just be blase, you know, get creative about what you're doing in the retargeting ads because people might see your ad 10 times. And if it's boring or dull, if it stands out, they're going to pay attention, you know, and if you can really get a point uh, across the point of why they should buy, then they're more likely to buy. And that's kind of getting to the whole psychology of the consumer to find out why are they involved with this stuff and the, and the timeliness of it. And another part of it that actually kind of segues into my next thing I wanted to talk about is the geographic area with the events industry. If a 3M corporation is doing a great big uh, sales meeting and they're looking for resources for that sales meeting, that a meeting is happening here in the Twin Cities area. There's no real reason why they should be trying to attract people from Atlanta, Georgia, or Sri Lanka, or Canada, right? Exactly. They probably want to stay tight. So with Facebook ads, you do have the ability to just specifically target a geographic area by, I think, zip code or city or just radius, right? Yep. You got it. Yep. Yeah. But one thing that did change just want to mention it if you're in the housing real estate any housing market employment there's certain um, new category that does not do zip codes they pulled zip codes from that category that's a very very recent change so i just is, want people to be aware of that is you that still just geographically but not zip codes is the zip codes gone just for real estate industry or is it gone for everybody it's for the real estate employment like mortgage um, whole housing market there's a category special category mm -hmm. it's a brand brand new special category yeah I just did a whole little podcast about it yeah so they removed zip codes age and gender from that so you cannot target any of that for that group now we can so if you're not that group you're fine but yeah just so FYI so how does that work then if a person is is in the real estate business does the actual develop of an, a facebook audience do their is their back office different than mine yeah they have to check mark this new special category oh interesting all those things are removed suddenly they're gone <laughs> <laughs> behaviors too yeah welcome to the internet Welcome to Facebook. Yes. And I just found this out myself recently. So, and I know that, you know, that's, that's people, real estate and housing run events too. So I'm just, you know, I think it's worth mentioning. Well, absolutely. There's always like real estate seminars and exactly. uh, um, mm -hmm. how to flip homes and all that kind of stuff. So they're definitely in the event industry. So that's yep. very interesting that that would change a little bit, but uh, a creative marketer can kind of figure out how can I get around that and circumvent Ex that issue. Exactly. I've run into this issue before and you just have to get creative. Now you can target based on geo target. I don't know enough because it, this is so new, but you can do geographic location still. It's just the zip is removed. Well, one of the things I love about the whole event industry is it's got a deadline to it and it's very, you know, the chronological element of it. So you can do a uh, birthday type of advertising. So if, a, if say for example, a realtor is doing a, an event where they want to bring in uh, fix and flipper people and do a seminar on how to, how to make money flipping and they're gonna do a, a cruise on Lake Minnetonka, they could target people that are, have a birthday in the next seven days or someone that has a birthday in October and they could say, happy birthday, I wanna buy you a ticket on a boat and teach you how to fix and flip homes they could do that kind of event yep. still using that laser targeted. Yep. Um, that's called getting audience. creative. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things I think is very fascinating about Facebook. Let me see if it I is. got some more questions here. It is. Um, I, I try not to do these, uh, these educational webinars and stuff real long because I've seen some of them that go two and three hours sometimes, but I think that's a little much Oof. but have businesses you can if you're doing a workshop style yeah for sure yeah, but yeah. Something like that mm -hmm. well my, my goal with all this is just to get event people understanding the power of the internet to be able to use because with the event industry we're still i just heard about somebody that's still doing handwritten invitations and thank you cards and all that kind of stuff which is good mm -hmm. but it's very time intensive yeah and you understand some of the things like the automated uh 
posting and things like that and you can automate a lot of your processes so and i have a send out card right here so you can even do send out cards that's one some somebody sent me a thank you exactly. <laughs> you know i mean there's there's all sorts of things that make your life fascinating easier. the digital world we're in yep so we talked about the audience types and we talked about the radiuses how about like um um, the different demographics there are like there's interests, field of study, employee of, and job titles. Um, yeah, there's interests and there's behaviors. So interests are things like you can target other fans of other pages of possibly your competitor, for instance. Mm -hmm. So if you know that your target audience follows this group of people, this person or business, then you could target that interest. So that would pull up under interest, for instance. And, and how then- is that, How are those different interests generated? Because uh, sometimes, like say me as a magical entertainer, there's probably not a lot of people that are interested in what I do. So if I had a competitor that wanted to tap into my knowledge- Yeah, you're too resources. small. It's gotta be big, yeah. Thought. It's gotta be big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'll too small. Bigger. No, I'm bigger. I'm too small. I'm I target small. like re, I just targeted Mari Smith, for instance, so that came up. But even um, I just did a thing with Mari and Wave Video, and Wave Video has a couple hundred thousand, but they're a newer company. They didn't come up, so I don't know the answer to that because they have a few hundred thousand on their page. You gotta dig into it and try and find somebody. You just have to find to it. Yep, like, you have to dig. There's a person in the event industry, his name's Corbin Ball, and he's been around for a long time, so he's probably got some followers that, uh, you know, that, that, that know him that in the event industry. Or like in real estate, the word Grant Cardone, everybody knows who that is. So you could follow people that follow Grant Cardone. Exactly, yeah. Got it. Yep, yep, and, and I will put a little twist on that. Be careful because I have had so many people come to me I want to target Gary Vee, Grant Cardone. The t get creative on these things. You know what I mean? Like that is a that's a big one. It will come up. But then I've heard of so many people targeting, um, you know, Tony Robbins. You know, those big names that just pop up. They're almost too big, and then you're going to compete against all the other people running ads targeting them. Exactly. Yeah, you want to kind of niche it down and find somebody mm -hmm. more specific. It, the, yep. it used to be broadcasting. Now I think everything is kind of narrow casting. And, yeah, and try to narrow it down as much as possible. You can test it, see how it works. I mean, I test everything. Um, and then the other side of it that you mentioned was behaviors. So behaviors can be, um, that's for instance, uh, it, we even, for one of my luxury brands, we target uh, income, it's, it's zip code income, highest income zip codes, top 10% is what we do. So they do have incomes in there. Now, and then they have like, that could also be um, recently married, recently engaged, all those things. That's, that was great for realtors. But once again, as far as I saw, they removed behaviors for that special okay. category. Mm -hmm. We have the special category still, unless you're in that. Mm -hmm that other area in the, in the housing market. So behaviors are cool, they're great. You don't have to have them, but they are cool and dig down into it. It could be like, if you're e-commerce for instance, it could be how often people shop or online shopping. If they're more likely to shop online, they're more likely to buy your product, then you could target that group. You know, So there's lots of different behavior. So there's two different categories, it's behaviors and interests are the two areas. Got it. I'm going to have to get used to the Zoom thing a little bit. Sometimes when I talk, or when you're talking, then the thing shifts back and forth. And I'm assuming that uh, the recording I'm, will look funny because you're oh, picking to be there and I'm talking like your voice got deeper or something. Mine, Mine's a side by side, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, mine is too, but it's got the little green line, line around it. Ah. So it pops when I'm talking versus when you're talking. Because like you just said, ah, and it jumped over there, and we'll see how it looks in the recording. This is a learning experience. That's the way yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's funny. I've only got a couple other questions, and okay. now we're getting down to the bottom of the audience part. There's that next segment of selecting the audience where it's um, um, like the narrower audience also must match. Yeah. How yep. specifically do you use that? Um, it's sort of an, an either or, if, and kind of situation. Yeah, I mean, let's just say you want to target, let's just put, let's just use what we're using, Grant Cardone and um, 
uh, Tony Robbins. Let's just throw those two out. So let's say you want to target both those groups, then you would do the and, but you can narrow the audience. So there's a narrow audience where you could say, I want to target Grant Cardone, but, but narrow the audience that you don't want to have the people, the other audience, the Tony Robbins. So there's X, I think that's called, I don't have it in front of me. So narrow audience, is that what it's called? There's no. exclude too. Um, yeah, it's so, called narrower audience. And you yeah. can exclude people. Yep. Or no. you can do and must also match. Exactly. Yep. So it's one or the other. So you'll you'll go to a smaller audience, obviously, if you're excluding. You'll go to a bigger audience if it and also must match. So yeah, I like the and part in that you could target um, uh, females that are interested in event planning and they have a job title of catering director. Yes. Because then you can really narrow it down. You can, but just be careful how small that audience gets. And then you throw in a geo-targeted location, you might have 10 people. I mean, you know what I mean? So just, you won't, your ad won't run. I'm running an ad right now, for instance, for my own business. And it's, uh, it's a very, very small audience and it's, not spending the amount of money per day at this point because it's so small. So it won't fully spend your money that you have put out there if it's too small too. Is there a number that that's, uh, that, that just won't play? Mm, you've got to try it, but I'd say be try to be in the thousands minimally. Yeah, because it's, so it's also relevant to how much money you're spending and the time frame you're doing it. Like I, I noticed that um, I'm interviewing our friend Mike O'Neill tomorrow on link, about LinkedIn. Okay, yeah. So trying to put something together for that in that short time frame, I don't have much time to, to, to let Facebook do all of its juju. No, no. The longer you can run an ad, the better you off you are to learn, to learn the data tweak things so how I run ads in the beginning if I am launching a brand new ad I will test three audiences and go with whatever creative I think would work narrow those audiences down you know and it can be if you have a bigger budget you could do up four or five six audiences but if it's a smaller like a 10 to 20 dollars a day then I wouldn't go over three audiences then on the other side, once you have narrowed down one audience, then you can go test, maybe you want to test um, one video versus three different graphics or something like that, just to see if the graphics work better or the video works better. So there's lots of different testing, but you want to test one variable at a time. Right. So you have multiple ads that look the same, but it's going to different audiences. Then when you find out that gold audience, then you take that audience and then you can try some different graphics. So yep. Yep, exactly. Test, test, test. That's but you don't have time to do that with what you're talking right. about. So that, right. And the event industry tends to be that way. I just got hired on yesterday by a client that wants me to market for an event starting next week. That is next week. And it's like, there's, not, there's no time. You know what I mean? You, and right. so that's something we won't be able to test anything. It's called well, throw it out there. there. Especially in your situation, because you don't have an audience that's already developed for that. Whereas what I've been doing, promoting with the Event Planner Expo and doing promoting individual people like David Lawrence on Paradise Charters, I'm growing this list of event industry people. So now ah. I can tap that and just go to that audience. So you're so doing audience. what I call warm audience. That's like all right. the custom audiences. I call it very warm. Yep. And yep. then you're getting in front of them again and again with the different yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, That's they, your best audience. Yep. They've seen a lot of my goofy videos, walking the dog and all that stuff. And people <laughs> think that I'm just goofing off, but I'm, I'm boosting those to people that are event people within a 25 mile radius of Minneapolis. So the reason I'm doing all that stuff is because if they watch that video for yep. you know, 50%, they're probably a good prospect. <laughs> yep. That's your video of your audience. You got it. Yep. Back to what we were talk talking well, about in the beginning. Coming down to the end a little bit, because like I said, it only take too much time, but I do want to um, give you some props. And um, the reason I'm doing all these things is I want people in the event industry to be able to find local people to be able to do and help them with the things they're doing. So if you can share a little bit about you, if you've got any classes online or otherwise, I know you got your social media meetup that people can go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold of you. 
Uh, JanityJohnson.com is the easiest. Um, that tells all about my background and what I do. I actually am launching right now a couple fun things that would relate to exactly what we talked about. So if people want to learn more, or dig in more, I will be doing a five-day challenge. And that starts September 9th. And that is actually Facebook ads audiences. So we're going to be digging into the audience in five different days, a five-day challenge. And with that, you can find that at janetyjohnson.com slash audience. Just at the slash audience at the end, and that will singular? take you to the sign up. Singular audience. Yeah, singular. Okay. You got it's it. It's janetejohnson.com. You got, got it. You got it. And then I will, I am actually running an early bird at this point for my October class of Ads ROI Academy. So that's just ads, A-D-S, R-O-I, academy.com. And you can learn more about that and then fill in the application to see if you're fit for it. And then we can chat and see um, if you want to join for the October class. Well, very cool. I plan on doing more of these within the event silo, if you will, the event industry. And I know that Facebook's always changing, so it'd be good to have some more of these with you and the other presenters on. Because uh, again, my goal for this, as far as the presenters, I want to give them an opportunity to start working with the event industry. Most people in this whole social media and digital marketing world, they go for those realtors, the chiropractors, the jewelers, the dentists, and the lawyers. Yes, They go for that exactly. long fruit. And I'd like to show them that the event industry is much bigger than a wedding. There's a lot of stuff in the whole, I mean, the Minnesota State Fair, that's an event. Exactly, exactly. Well, like, the, like we talked about, the, the real estate, you know, you think of, that they run all sorts of events. I mean, people are just doing event, event, event. I mean, even I'm an event for, you know, I run my own events, you run events, you know. So I think people don't look deep enough with these events, you're right. Exactly. Well, I'm not sure how to turn off this recording, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. All right. I'm gonna so sign this off. Janet, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And I'm gonna sign this off and work on whatever I have to work on if you can figure out how to get the- Thank you. Yep. To me.